shocked at the majority's response. Still carrying on with the mask wearing and the paranoia, every time you get into an elevator, you see the confusion on people's faces. Should I get in? Is the person concerned about COVID? Am I behaving correctly? The whole social etiquette is being changed and that's creating bigger divisions between us all. The last couple of months have proved that our suspicions regarding the pandemic are founded. According to the science, only a few weeks ago, it would have been a disaster if we were to be in contact with each other. A few weeks later, and there has been a number of protests around the world with people in close contact. Countries have opened up and people are gathering in their masses. This has been happening for at least four weeks and based on the science that we've been told, it takes 14 days to transmit the virus. It has been way longer and millions of people have not died and the infection rate hasn't risen. This is an inconsistency and a clear contradiction. So put yourselves in their shoes, what would you do? The number of people believing that the virus is being used to fulfill an agenda is rising. How did they resolve this issue? Do not think for a moment that they were not anticipating this. Remember the first few weeks of the pandemic how the term misinformation was echoed all over the news. This was as dangerous as the virus itself. What I find intriguing is the government's approach recently. In one breath they encourage the public to protest and don't stop them from gathering. Our police this weekend will be about trying to adopt as low-key approach as possible. Yet at the same time keep giving us this disclaimer of the second wave coming. Almost like planting the seeds of, we told you so. The virus is still out there. Uh, to, to win, to beat this thing, we have to stay alert and do this in a, in a balanced way. Another plea for caution from the Prime Minister, but is anybody listening? Some beachgoers in Bournemouth weren't when they flocked to the coast yesterday. If they were so sure the second deadly wave is coming, why are they not taking tougher measures for social distancing? They were perfectly capable of doing it the first time around. Why so half-heartedly now? Here is what it seems to be. The first wave was to shock the world, implant the new terror concept in the masses' minds, create divisions and start the psychological warfare. This phase allows them to monitor the public's response, obedience levels, identifying resistance, as well as starting to implement the new infrastructure. This includes destroying small businesses and start the idea of a cashless society which is being rolled out as you are watching this in the UK. That's just to mention a few items on their agenda. Something I found interesting, according to the science, viruses can last up to 72 hours on plastic. However, on paper and cloth, it can only last for four hours. In late 2019, the Bank of England started replacing all £10 and £5 notes with plastic and in January 2020 they replaced £20 notes. Maybe the timing is merely a coincidence. Let's go back to what their next move could be. As the number of voices suspected foul play with the pandemic is on the rise, the best way to shut these voices up once and for all is to go for a second and more deadly pandemic. One day in the next eight weeks, the leaders will hold a press conference and tell us all that because we rushed into opening up and didn't obey the government's instructions, the second wave has hit us hard and we are all responsible. A national emergency will be declared and they will take away even more of our freedoms. Everyone speaking out against the lockdown will be silenced by the majority and their plan will be back on track for good this time. That's if we don't do something. You can already see the seeds they are planting about the second wave coming soon. This has started in the last few days and it will intensify in the coming weeks without question. Since 2001 and for 20 years all they scared us with was terrorism. It was the biggest threat to all and was used to take away many of our rights and started the surveillance campaign against humanity. But after two decades, people have become desensitized to terrorism. We became better connected 
so the old model had run its course and they needed an upgrade to carry them to the next phase of their plan. Have you noticed how for the last six months there has been nothing about terrorism mentioned? Has everybody in the Middle East made up now and become friends? Today people who are still actually anti-science, a whole movement called the anti-vaxxers, I'm profoundly optimistic about the ability of new technology to serve as a liberator and to remake the world, to remake the world, to remake the world. The new upgrade had to be more universal. The fear had to be everywhere, all of the time, and the evil doesn't distinguish between race, religion, or class. What is better than a virus? It's either that or a fake alien invasion. Remember the American elections are in November, so let's expect maximum disruption and chaos in the months of September and October leading up to that event. Why are we not holding governments and their version of science accountable? Why is there no questions being asked about the 60,000 people that died from non-Covid related illnesses during the last three months? Even when the number is bigger than the 40,000 that died from Covid. History never looks like history when you are living through it. It always looks confusing and messy, and it always looks uncomfortable. It's time to wake up. <laughs>